Anyway, welcome to 100% LCFC TV. Alan, another great victory for Leicester. You called it last week. I think you even said 2-1, didn't you? I did. So you got uh, the score right? Yeah, did I get a free t-shirt now? Uh, yes, you get a free t-shirt. Is by that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it was... Um, yeah, it was... Listen, we said, I hope he changes the full-backs, and he did. Yeah. And, uh, brilliant. Worked, worked very, very well. It so, looked far more solid, the back four. You know, well, oh, fair play to Jeff and fair play to Richie Delat. But I don't think it suits him at the four at the back. Delatt, you like him? I do like him. Right. I'll tell you that all the time, but I don't think it suits him at the four. I'm not over keen on you. <laughs> he probably hates me. Um, no, but it, and I think it showed especially Juf, uh, uh, Jeff getting um, further forward, playing as a left winger, which I think is his, striker, is his most effective position. I've said yeah. it for, since he came, came on the scene. Took a great goal, fantastic composure to let the defender make his move, take that extra stride and slot it. So great, back four looks solid. Midfield Canty, he's been outstanding. He is, he's immense, isn't he? Oh, everybody's yeah, talking about how, how the, the money spent for Mares was only £400,000. The money spent for this lad, I tell you what, this boy, and he sets up both goals. I think he gets both of them. Certainly the second one for, for Jeff. But, um, Great support as well, by the way. Yeah, what so a noise you made. The fans were fantastic, weren't they? I mean, Kante, coming back to him, there's, there's a film called Moneyball, where, uh, a baseball film. Seen it. Uh, it's a great film. I, and see, it's I a only film. watched that about two weeks ago. Oh, did you? My yeah. son, Kyle. <laughs> it's a great film. Who will be watching us, uh, is in Southampton mm. doing his nonsense. He's, he's, but, let me counter that. Brentford. Go on then, right. explain. You're saying that in, in the film, that the recruitment is part it, of baseball is massive. And, and, they go, on and they're talking tens and fifteen and twenty millions yeah. for a player or for a well, for but whatever. They're doing it off facts, or somebody or who can make first base or something yes. like that nonsense, you know. Yeah. They tried it at Brentford. They sacked the manager, they brought the guy in, we'll buy or bring in players on stats. Yes. On statistics, that's how we're going to base it. They've just sacked the guy. Have they? Yeah, because the stats have gone stupid. The and what a stupid <laughs> idea, by the way, Brentford. Because, listen, the, the artist scout, go and watch a player. Go and watch teams. Get out every day. Watch them, watch them, watch them. Find out about their, their social life. Find out their background. Find out everything that there is to know about the player. If he can play, is the biggest thing. But that's the way to find players. That's the way to get youngsters through and, and, and into the game. Not somebody who's, all right, um, he scored three goals last week and then he scored a goal the week before uh, and he only had three chances so that's great stats so he must be a great player bollocks but Alan I was going to say statistically Kante was uh, I think he was the top um, tackler last season in right, Europe right so statistically we you know and they did go and watch him Leicester did go they've got a great little scouting system I think Dan wonderful yes about. but I agree with you I think for, for his <coughs> He was around five million pounds, wasn't he, Kante? Yeah. And, and again, you look at lots of uh, of the teams, you know, the so-called bigger teams, and you think, what, well, you know, they've they've missed out there again. Well, Another I think, great yeah. midfielder. Let, 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 let me qualify you at three and uh, thirty sure. million. Sure, Phil. Let me qualify a wee bit what I said earlier. Um, stats do come into hmm. certain parts of football, but I, I, not not the playing part for me. I mean, out of those five hundred tackles that he made, how many times did he? get booked how many times did he you know um, give away free kicks in dangerous places they're the kind of stats that you might look at yeah. because the player is maybe a little bit undisciplined so that's well, alright it's all very well I'm making them but if he's going to get the ball away give free kicks to the edge of the box and you lose one nil then the stats say he shouldn't be in the team so was that the reason that we got him you never know. Be. Let's let's move on to uh, Jamie Vardy's penalty. Where we've got a bit of we've had a bit of debate. We've had a coffee before this, and we were umming and ahhing. We've yeah. rewatched it several times. Yeah. I think he's done now, enough. You, to, <coughs> done enough me. to make. If the, you're talking about stats, <laughs> yeah, <go> right. <laughs> the stats say that if Jamie Vardy gets onto anything in the penalty area, he's going to get a penalty. Does it? Well, he's very clever. 
He's very, he, he, he waits for challenges. He gets his body between the defender and the ball. Yeah. Doesn't bother too much about the ball. Waits on the challenge and then maybe just slides the ball. Sorry, I'm just moving my left foot here, folks, as you can see. Right? <laughs> he just strokes the ball to one side of the defender, takes his shove and goes. Yeah. And yeah, technically they're but penalties. He, get, he did get, you know. Oh, got... technically they're penalties. But yeah. well, we'll take I'll, it, ask you, I'll ask you this one, though. If it had been against us, would you have been happy? I don't think so. I think if it had, if it had, yes, I agree. If it had come <laughs> against us, I think we'd have been like, oh. But I think you'd have been frustrated at the fact that, you know, I think the attackers played for it and won it, and that's and that's just the game we're in now. So well, I think it's know. it's it, the, you've got to give credit to yeah. to the passer and to the receiver, right? Good pass, good run, but that can, gives you the take, chance. Well, can't take great pass. Can't take great great pass for Jeffrey Swoop by the way. Yeah, and um, and uh, but. You've got to give credit to them for that. And then look at the defender. The defender was in a poor position. He ended up facing his own goal. So you wouldn't buy him on stats, would you? <laughs> no. And I mean, so the penalty by Vardy, I think that gives him seven goals in the Premier League. Top scorer, doesn't he? He's the top scorer in the Premier League. Obviously the top English scorer. Yeah. Um, and we're going, to have, we're going to do a quick another video coming up after this about Jamie Vardy in England. So right. I don't want to talk about him now at the moment. But... Uh, yeah, Schlupp, Schlupp took his goal very well. He picked, he won the ball sort of halfway in their own area, burst forward. And again, match of the day were giving him all the plaudits. They were talking like him as, as though they'd been talking about Marez, how he was attacking the box. Yeah. And you, you prefer, Jeff, that bit further forward. I've said it all along. Yeah. Since he got on the scene, um, he went to Manchester United and he played up front. And I watched a few games uh, that were played behind goal, uh, closed doors. And they let him come back. And he played as a striker. So Alec Ferguson, who was there at the time, has obviously said, no, he's not any better than what we've got. And he's probably said, no, I don't think he's a striker. Came back to us, started uh, up in front a couple of times, left wing, found himself at left back. For me, he is never, ever going to, well, he might be later in his career, when he gets bigger and more physically stronger, a left full back. Uh, but he's not a striker. He doesn't like playing with his back to goal. He, doesn't, he, like, he likes to be going on to things. That's Jeff's strength. So left winger, left wing back as they call him sometimes. That's Jeff's position. And I think it proved it on Saturday. Um, it's frustrating at times because when he gets that chance to shoot, when he's when he's playing further forward, yeah. it can either end up like it did. Very very calmly. And you you, you were saying that he he paused. He took long an extra step, Phil, yeah. To to then to hold the defender, let the defender yeah. commit. Because if he'd hit the defender's coming here, he might have hit against the defender's legs. Yeah. By taking that extra stride, the defender's attempt to block is nullified, it's out of the way, and then he hits with his left foot. Very clever. But sometimes he can infuriate you because he's 50-50 whether that'll end up in row Z in the back of the stand. Riyad Mahrez can frustrate the life out <laughs> of you. frustrates me, I know. You know, I mean, that, the last game against Arsenal yeah. might never have turned up. I didn't think they would left, have left him out on Saturday. I didn't think I didn't see that one. I seen the full wags definitely. I, would, I didn't see the Mares one, but I should have done. I should I should have known he's going to get arrested, kid. The balance in the team was was superb. Mm. Well, two left first, two right first. Little lads up front, great pace. Midfield players that can fight and battle, but can play and pass. And it was and, and the back four looked very very solid to me. So, you know, Mares. He, I think he might have to wait a couple of weeks before he gets Might, his chance Maybe. Back. I mean, you said the back four solid, which, you know, yeah. we won, so I'm not grumbling. So but there's no pizza. There was, that there was no that pizza. Last goal. Yeah, no pizza because we can't keep a clean sheet. I know. We've got, if you look at the four and against, I mean, the real it's fact horrendous. is we've won, you know, we the need points, to stop the goal still. We yeah. need to. And he worked on that, and that's why he put that four in yeah. uh, on Saturday. And it's worked, and it'll stay until it doesn't work. And yeah. then, but then let, let's go back to the Arsenal game. And any of you who watched Manchester United against Arsenal yesterday, Arsenal pummeled them. Arsenal took them to bits. Yeah. You remember we were one nil, one nil up against the Arsenal and nearly went two and three up. Manchester United go there, they got absolutely hammered. So maybe that puts the Arsenal game into a wee bit of context. I think it does. I mean, we put that out on Facebook yesterday. Is <laughs> this when they went three nil up in twenty minutes? And, and loads of people were saying, yeah, you know, I mean, it, that, it was the Leicester 5-2 game. It never really felt like a 5-2 game. I think we, all, I think we deserved to lose that because mm. I think Arsenal did show up. And they're looking, they're looking probably like the first or second favourites to maybe 
at the moment in the title race. And, yeah. and Sanchez is just, he's fantastic. Yeah, they'll, they'll do well, Arsenal. It was with, great. If it's somebody great. goes in and kidnaps Aguero. <laughs> <laughs> five goals <laughs> yeah, somebody takes told me him to the Middle East somewhere and <laughs> he had know. nine touches on Saturday apparently and scored five goals Incredible. in 20 minutes the, the guy is such a good finisher I feel really sorry for Steve McLaren at Newcastle as well I'm, <laughs> I'm joking ah. <laughs> it's quite fun to I'm see surprised I'm surprised we're sat here on a Monday morning and Brendan Rodgers is born everybody will know and Dick Steve, Steve McLaren's he's still Dick job. Advocate. He's yeah. got to learn English before he gets a job. For but Steve McLaren's still there. And Steve McLaren's still there, I find very, very hard to believe. I mean, well, they've got what have they got? Three points or something? Four points? And the other guy who, when Leicester came back against Villa 3-2, his post-match, we said at the time, his post-match match of the day interviews... Um, Dick Advocate? No, the Villa boss, and my mind's gone blank. Oh, uh, Sherwood. Tim Sherwood. Tim yeah. Sherwood. He looked it's a not mess. Tim Sherwood. Yeah, it is. Oh, is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> We're rubbish, aren't we? <laughs> Tim Sherwood. After, not that good. After the, after the Villa game, he looked a real mess, and I'm surprised again. They, they've they lost, and uh, he's still there. But, well, hey, it's it's nice. We're, all we're talking about is how good Claudio Ranieri has taken the team. Go, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Yeah, Claudio Ranieri has done a great job. I don't dispute that. It's down to the players. Yes. It's the players that, that play, it's the players that make mistakes, yeah. it's the players that correct things, it's the players that create, defend with their lives and everything. The manager. Once the manager's set the team up, worked out best for, for everybody, once they cross that white line, the manager, no matter how much he rants and raves, he shouts and balls, or stays as quiet as ever, cannot affect the team. He have then can affect the team by using three substitutes, yeah. and maybe by changing a system, by changing personnel and a system. Once they're out there, go, his job's done. It's up to the players. So, another great But I'm not, I'm not saying that he's not doing a good job. But let's, let's just take another scenario. There's a lot of good games coming. I say good games because it's Man United and Chelsea and Man City and Everton and all them big hitters. I can't wait for them. When we're not playing well, the great clubs, when they're not playing well, still get results. That's what I'm looking for from my team. Thanks, Alan, for joining us. We'll catch up with you soon. We're going to check the next video out because we're going to be talking specifically about Jamie Vardy. Video. Bye-bye.